How is everyone doing? I hope everyone is doing good this beautiful morning. So um, if you're here and you're present and you know you've had breakfast, even if it's just a sip of water, you know, just something to revive you, just raise your hand so we know we are we're together as a team. Just raise your hand. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. So for the rest of the team, why haven't you had breakfast or, you know, just drink a cup of water? Okay, so today it seems we have a quiet group. Anyway, um, before we get to the, oh, oh, okay, Bethlehem. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Okay, thanks for letting me know. So before we get to the usual, well, what we've planned for today, because it's not the usual, um, I have a couple of announcements that I would love to let you guys know. So um, first things first, um, the contract, um, it, it was actually due yesterday, but if you haven't signed it yet, please try to do so today and let's not drag on with that. Um, Aaron has sent a link for those of you who are requesting to know how to insert a digital signature. So it's there. Um, you can just check. Um, I think it was in the all week four or all resources channel. Um, Aaron, I'm not too sure, but um, he he sent it and it's there. So you can just use it and try to just pen your signature down and then you submit the contract on the Google Classrooms. Okay. And um, as we know, right now, we're still looking out for the payments and some people have made it and um, we want to say thank you. And for those of you who are yet to pay, if you have any issues probably regarding how to do it or the exchange rate or anything, just send a message directly to Arun or to Cindy or to me and definitely we'll try to get it sorted out for you. Okay. And um. For the rest of the week, your assignments are due tomorrow, that's Wednesday. Your group work, it's due tomorrow, that's Wednesday. So would love to see what you guys have worked on. We're so excited to see. And um, Thursday and Friday, there will be no usual morning stand-up. Thursday and Friday, there will be no usual morning stand-up, but we'll let you know if we're going to have um, another informal, you know, chit-chat session with you guys. We'll definitely let you know. And, um, yeah, so that's all the announcements for my end. Um, Arun, did I miss out anything? I think so. Uh, Yatiana? Yes. The, the deadline yeah. for submission, the technical one, is on Thursday, not Wednesday. Oh, on Thursday. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure I just caused a little panic attack for some for some trainees. My bad. I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, so the deadline for the technical, it's not on Wednesday, but on Thursday. Okay, so guys, yeah. relax. Yes, as, as always, <laughs> sorry. No, as always, it's just the, the definitive guide is the challenge document. So we may sometimes, when we speak, we may confuse it, but you always have to just uh, take a note that the challenge document describes the X, whatever is the truth. Okay. Yeah, thank you. That's a good point. Yeah, so um, as um, Yababel has said, on the challenge document, definitely the deadline and due date and everything, it's there. Okay. So, um, yeah, over to you. Okay, so probably some of you have seen the notification already, or at least you, you were aware on Friday. So what we are going to do today, um, instead of the stand-up, we want the groups to actually present where they are and what they do. It's more of like supposed to be a mid way of catch up, letting know the group because everyone is working on the, around the same area. So we wanted to know from each group some kind of 15 minutes 
you talk within the groups, you can divide who's speaking what, and you let us know. And then five minutes, there will be people asking you, like from every other team. So which team is ready to give us the first presentation? Or, you know, it's either, if you have a slide, it's a presentation. If you don't have a slide, you may have, um, you know, you may present it just from your screen or anything. Just it's more informal, but make sure to communicate to show what you have done and where you are. So is there any team that volunteers instead of just me calling a team? Elias, yeah? Okay, I think we can start. Great, that thank thing. you. Yeah, the floor is yours. Okay, I'll be sharing the screen from my laptop. Yeah. Okay, like, can you see my screen, right? Yes, we do. Okay. So, like, we started the task by pre doing the pre-processing on our data, like the audio data and the transcriptions. So, like, we have three notebooks. The first one is for pre-processing. Could you start just just for the sake of what the kind of the overall business thing, like, just to, start, to not start from the middle? Don't assume that we know, but start from, like, what is the business? What are you doing? And then you can kind of go into this uh, gently. OK. So OK, the, first, the idea was to do speech recognition, uh, to build a speech recognition system for Amharic. So for that, there is a data set in Amharic. In, there's the data set, and the data set contains around 11,000 transcripted speech. So the speech vary between like two seconds and uh, 60 seconds. So like when we started on the project, we we planned how we are going to approach the project. And like we have created a repository and uh, divide the tasks. So like we've created an issue, like if I show you. So like project. So like, so to complete a speech recognition system, like you need to create like from the speech, you need to create a metadata, then like do some form of explore, exploration, like on the transcription on or the audio. Then we plan to clean the data, then some for saving, the data, the clean our clean data, then like for transcription, we need to do tokenization for training our model. Then the other point we is generating some form of feature because like we cannot directly fit the audio signal into a model. So, so we need to do some form of feature extraction from the audio signal. Then like data generator, meaning we need to break the audio data or into bars of data, like because we cannot train the whole data at once. So, like data, we need data generator, and also, if possible, we plan to do data augmentation. Then we build building the model and the evaluation. So, like the overall goal is like to build a market speech recognition system with some rate of accuracy within a given data, like. In general, for a good speech recognition system, like you need around 3,000 hours of data. Like, but here we have 60 hours of data. Like when you calculate, it's around 60 hours. So our goal wasn't to build a perfect speech recognition system, but to be able to show the pipeline that it can be done. And also, like if we had more data, the model does actually improve and. It can, we can actually create a reasonably good speech recognition system for Amharic. So is that it? Great, yeah, that's it, wonderful. That's a good summary. So you can go now to the details, thanks. Okay, so like for the first part, we've divided the task into three parts. Like uh, we need to so do the pre-processing, like I've said earlier, then there is a, a, more, a notebook for removing outliers from our data set. 
because our outliers would cause a lot of the trouble while tra trying to train a model. And then the third part would be building the actual model. So like first, when we started, like we've created a metadata from our transcription, like this would be the key meaning, the name of the audio signal, and this would be the transcription of the audio. So like, then we calculated character links of each transcriptions and the links of each audio signal. So like this is just a metadata describing our data. And then like when we look into the transcription, like most of the data has single characters. Like if we look into this, like these are the top five, they are just single characters. Like when I look, take the, with more than 1000 appearances, they are also still, most of them are single characters. So like this is going, this is a word cloud for the data. And here also we can see the most present ones are single characters. But if for someone who knows Amharic, the words are not independently speaking, like th these characters are part of the word. So I don't know the, the problem behind the data set, but like that was the first problem we have found in data exploration. And then we have tried to do some exploration based on the notebooks that's provided on audio. Then like we started cleaning the audio signal. So to clean the audio signal, first thing is normalization. What normalization does is like, for example, you take the highest signal, like highest frequency and the lowest, and then like you try to scale that between maybe between zero and one or one to minus one, but it's just normalizing the data. So this is the normalized signal. So like we did normalization on each audio signal, then there is Streaming the audio. This is a Librosa library. What it does is it computes the highest decibel in the signal, and then we will give it a threshold. Then anything that's below that specific threshold would be removed from the signal. But the trim is different in that it only removes from the beginning and the end. It will not touch anything in the middle. So like, it, it, we can see like there's a difference like audios below the threshold have been removed from the start and the end. Then there's a split. A split does like the same thing with like this one, but the difference is it also removes from the middle. So like audio below that threshold, whether it's in the beginning or at the middle would be removed. So like when I also we listen to the audio signal, I cannot play the audio, but like the silence are removed, but it is reasonably sensible. Like you can notice when one word ends and the next, so it's not extremely concatenating the each each word. Then the other thing is we try to clean the text. We used like there is a library called Hornomorpho for Amharic. That it contains like every word for Amharic. It also does like root word, it can give you the root word of a specific word and uh, a lot. it does a lot, but what we did was just take the dictionary and then we try to concatenate like the first character to the next, the first word to the next word and the third word. And if there, that word actually existed in the library, we'll use that. Uh, and then after doing that, like we've been able to improve the sentences, the problem with the sentence a little bit. And then this would be the word the word cloud after cleaning it, like it's a lot different from the previous one. And then finally, like we resampled the audio data to 8,000 uh, for speech, 8,000 is reasonably good. And then if you go a little bit behind this, you you start to lose the data a whole lot. And if you, but for example, if you use 60,000, like you will not gain that much. So like this is a reasonable choice. And for speed of reading, we save the audio data as an MPI file, like rather than reading audio signal, we using Librosa, which takes a longer time, we saved it as an MPI file so we can read it faster. So this would be like an overview of what we have done on the first pre -program.
Great. Anyone else continuing after that, what you guys are doing? You have still seven minutes. I think a lot of people are not here. Can I just continue? Which, which team is that? Sorry, just the team three. Team three. So anyone from team three wants to add? Okay, currently I'm using my phone and I don't have power, so I would highly recommend if ALS continues. Can, can you speak slightly closer? Okay, currently yeah. I'm using my phone and I don't have power, so I would recommend it if Elias could continue the rest. Okay. Okay. Anyone else from Team 3? Yeah, from Bunny. All right, I will just talk about reprocessing a little bit more, and I think someone else also continue from there. Okay. Do you want to share your screen, or do you want Elias to share the screen? All right, I think I'll just use my screen. Okay. Elias, if you can stop, yeah. Then in, in six minutes, anyone else from any group can ask questions. So prepare your questions. Yeah, can you see my screen? Yes. All right. So after we have the after we have the data, the one that Elias cleaned, we did a little bit more reprocessing on the same data. Like so, <coughs> excuse me. So here we're just adding the we have the audio file here. We have the text and then the clean text that we generated, and then we are calculating the character length for the for the text. The character length for the text, the original text, and then the character length for the clean text that we generated, and then the duration for each audio file and the audio file after it has been cleaned, and the speed, and the speed for both the clean text, the original text, and then the clean text, and then this is just a category of where the of where the data belongs for belongs to the training or testing data. So after that. Uh, we were trying to work on the outliers. Basically, from our data, what we're, we're looking at outliers as is like what's the average character length for the for the what's the average character length for the audio? So, if you can see here, can you see this graph? Yes, we do. Yeah. So, if you can see from this graph, like we uh, from from zero. When you, when you look at character length down there, the x-axis, from 0 to somewhere around, let's say, 10, um, there are no, they, 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 it has no characters, and then from somewhere around 120, around 125 here, there are, there are also, like, there are very few, I can say there are very few, there are a lot of characters, but then there are very few, there are very few audio files that have such kind of data. So we are trying to remove we are trying to remove this uh, this applies uh, that on the character length and then we're also doing the same thing for the transcription length and then we also we also did the same thing as removing outliers in terms of duration of the audio some audio files are very long and then some had no some had no data at all so you can say like that. So we're also removing the outliers from here and this this part. So um, if you can see, this is actually the this is the original, and then after we try to is Bombani disconnected? Remove the data. This is how it looks like now. After I mean, after we try to remove the outliers, that's how it looks like now. And then, yeah, hello. No, we we can hear you now. It's okay. Oh, I think I was going to refer me. So right. You have two minutes, so you you guys have to show us if there is anything else. Oh. It's like you have only two minutes. 
to finish the presentation. All right. I, all right. I think for the reprocessing, I think someone else can continue with the model now. Okay. Because this is just Thanks. reprocessing that. Thanks. Anyone can give us what they have done in the moderating the same team? Two minutes? Okay. I, I just can continue. It is? Okay, go on. Okay, so like we have done a whole lot here and I don't think two minutes would do anything. So I'll just try to show the result. Like the, the thing is like, for example, we've created a spectrogram on a fly, like it's a part of a preprocessing model. So we don't save any spectrogram. We can change it at any time. And uh, here is where we are trying to choose which would be the best fit like based on F50 and um, like F50 size and number of mills. Then after choosing these CTC loss, like the, it is really, for example, if your size is not going to be the same, it's really going to be difficult to compute the output length for CTC loss. And also if you are using convolution, you have to do other computations to be able to get that. So. We have also done a whole lot over here. Then here was, this was our final model. This would allow us to compute the time, like there's a time. So how, after going through all this convolution, what would be this dimension? So this is for computing that. And then this would be our model. It's based on like the Baidu speech recognition model, but like rather than resonate, we are using just a convolution activation and a max pooling. And also we are trying a resonate by replacing resonate over here. So it's just training already now. Uh, then the, after training the model, the result is like, so the other point is we have done all data augmentation when generating the data. And like there, if I show you over here, like the, we change the speech, we add noise and change the pitch. And then for every audio signal, we'll be getting four, like four signals, like one with noise, one with pitch changed, one with speed cha changing the speech. So like when training the model and also when we change speed or the pitch, like we use, we use random numbers. So like the data would be changing, like the noise levels for one signal would not be the same throughout the training, the data will be changing. And also that would help in training the model. So like the final result, like here is a prediction on the training data, but it's not really reasonable to do on training. So like it's a, it's similar, like world error rate is like 0 0.36. So for this level of data set, I think it's really good. Uh, like this is on the test data set and this is a pre this is the original sentence. This is a this is a transcription. This would be our prediction. So like on on shorter ones, like it does better. And on longer sentence, it faces a little bit of difficulty. So like we are trying to improve the model. Wonderful, thank you. So now open for question. Anyone can unmute and ask or type for the next five minutes. The theme. Yeah, Jakinda. Uh, question. Currently, uh, in my group, we are having an issue when it comes now to the modeling part. Uh, when we extract the FCC array, how are you feeding that array? Because it's quite big. How are you feeding them inside your model? Is there any transformation that you're doing after getting them? Okay, like we are not computing MXCC, like we are using a spectrogram, but it's similar. So what we do is just, we directly feed that into our convolutional layer. So like it's all about compute, making sure that the shape of the output of the spectrogram is the same with the input size of the model. And yeah. I think after that, like, and the other point would be like, for example, if you are using CTC loss, like, the length of the, like time dimension, you have, there's a frequency that, or the y-axis would imply frequency, the x-axis would be the time. And in the time, like 
the length of your characters like maybe you have 15 characters right so if you have 15 yeah. characters if you have 15 characters then and under the time you should have a feature at least two times the character length is plus one so like if you have smaller features the right there the ct slows would not be able to you know to do the transcription oh, okay thank you maybe i'll look for you after the stand up thank you michael okay, michael um yeah, I might say I'm very impressed with the work they've done. Um, they've, they've, they've really um, put in some work. My question is, um, I want to find out if at the beginning um, they had issues with respect to getting everybody to scratch, uh, with respect to um, putting in um, the, their contributions and stuff with, with to get to where they've got into. And if they had, how did they find ways to resolve that? So anyone from the team, including Elias, do you want to answer that? Yeah, I'm from group three. OK, go on. Back. So yeah, pretty much uh, this concept was new for, for uh, a lot number of members of the group except one or two person uh, we were new for the topic we might know it on on like an awareness standard but we had no technical awareness and experience about uh, speech recognition and the models related to it uh, but we, it also amazes me that the 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 speed in which we were able to you know understand how it works, the flow, and dive into it. We you know we understand and read the concept, and we dive into the coding and its technicality. We get some difficulties. Uh, we ask for help in the group. Of course, Google and uh, YouTube, the internet is a, uh, it takes the lion's share, but sometimes there are concepts we don't understand quite well. At that time, you know, asking a friend makes it easier to understand. So, yeah, they were new and we also had a rough time understanding it, but uh, the fact that we were in groups, uh, Role uh, played a great role in understanding and working in a fast-paced environment. Yeah, that's what I have to say. All right, thank you. Yeah, so the time is up for this one, but I would say you can also have like this team exchange. You know, it's like you can invite one team to to talk and to have like as a team you can also arrange some calls because this is the whole point. Um, even if you know there will be other things also to come, so it's good. Okay, so we go to the next team. Who is going to be the next team to give us? Presentation? Thank you, Team Three, and for presentation it was very good. So who's the next team that can give us highlights and what they do? As you see, it's just more informal, so it should be. So could I call randomly? So this was team three, so let's continue to team four. Anyone from team four? All right, yes, um, I'm from group four. Okay. Yes, um, with group four, we, we actually have an issue as far as uh, contributions and understanding is concerned. Um, the, the, the main issue is there isn't that sync between the members and uh, individually they are, they are struggling. And the members are in itself, you don't have, let's say one member would say, okay, I think this is kind of slowing the group down and then we would have to organize a meet and all that. Their response to meeting and all that is also not good. So in effect, as we stand now, the main branch, there isn't, there isn't any uh, contribution to the main branch. I've, I've gotten in touch with um, 
most of them personally and what they express is they are also struggling so what happened was yesterday one group member gave me group three's quotes and what i did was um, the group member said that she couldn't understand what had gone on so um what i did was okay i would i i also didn't understand that well but i said i was going to review the quotes so i forked their repository and then I went through it and I was adding comments to it and with the intention that once I'm able to get to, um, now I've gone through their pre-processing and I think I, I get the whole steps in their pre-processing and then I started um, their modeling. And once I get that, I'll try and organize a meeting between the group and then we would all talk about that. And then we would see how we can now use that as a base to write the codes to get our work done. Great, thank you. But is there anything you can tell us? So beyond to just that? Yeah, same. All right. Um, I think I've made more progress than other members of the team have also made some more progress. It's just, uh, should I? Yeah, uh, present it. Just present what is. There isn't much interesting about it, but. but I mean, it, it is not about it. I think it's about what you guys have spent. So the time is more countable. That means where did you spend your time? It could be just while telling us, you can tell us where something you understood, where you didn't understood. More like this is you know an informal, it's not a formal presentation. So whatever you have done, even if the ones that failed, it's important. So basically, um, sh where should I start? I think from the summary, just what do you guys want to do? Or even okay. if like you have your own internal thing, as a team, you just have to say like, okay, this is the business idea that we want to solve, and this is how we okay. approached it. Kind of, you know, like, yeah, cover up uh, the things and then just all the things that you've done. Okay, um, I, I haven't really written the markdown for that, but the whole uh, process is, there is the World Food Program wants to, have a text a speech to text application made because they want to rec record nutritional information and we're using the openly available Swahili data set to create a model that achieves that. And so in the pre-processing stage, not much was done because I, wanted to just see the original the performance of the original audio data so it's just collecting the text and then apparently our uh, the data we we had wasn't particularly clean there is i think entries of music and unknown uh, entries in the data set so just and there's punctuation in some of them so this just removes everything and then just making sure that the audio that we've saved um i we convert we created the mel coefficient uh, spectrograms and saved them as a pickle file because Processing them each time I had to run the notebook was taking a long time. So it's just doing that for both the original data and the validation. And then there are a bunch of models um, a by directional RNN model, a simple RNN model, and a CNN and RNN combination model. And then just try to train those but 
the bidirectional and the simple model weren't really performant. The CNN and the other models were a bit better, but they quickly overfit, as you can see. After a while, it, actually, this doesn't show it really well. Let me. So as you can see, after a certain point, they start diverging. And so for the next steps, we were just planning on augmenting the data and then trying to train with that instead to see the improvements to the performance. Because that was in the readings, they said that data augmentation is a very good option for improving the accuracy and since the data isn't for the audio isn't particularly clean either some of them have background music i think it's broadcast data so then since it's broadcast data there is like news broadcast music in the background and other things so the next step is using that augmentation to train a better model and to maybe try out other models that might perform better. So far, the lowest CTC loss we were able to get is, I think, about 68. And since the text, our text, what differentiates it from the Amharic is that we're using the Latin alphabet, so there aren't that many mappings that could be made because the same letter might map to different sounds, so it makes it harder for the model to be more exact. And so we need more data or more uh, augmented data for a better model. I think that's it. Great. That covers most of the work. Thank you. So that's an encouragement, right? So as a team, you can still come up. You have now the model. You went to a good strategy. And now the part is like someone has to do the cleaning. And especially those people who understand Swahili um, should come and help in terms of like this pre-processing. And there's still, I mean, I think it's always just as hard, but this is a good encouragement that you you can now make it still there's a lot of room that you could improve. Definitely just trying the model. So you have set up end to end. It just needs definitely work to make sure and also to to sh to show just like, for example, team three, like you should show like what is a translated, not only just the loss, but also what is what is found, what is predicted and then kind of. Yeah, I had done that, but during the refactoring process, I was refactoring the code. so some it's in a notebook that hasn't been run yet and that hasn't been correctly made yeah. that's why so i think yeah what i would recommend also is that you guys just now give some of you who are a bit advanced on this like michael and sam i don't know the others but you have to give them task whether they finish it or not it's it should be but you continue your work but divide and concur such that for example somebody should provide a clean data it doesn't matter what is a clean data, but you give them like, okay, you need to give me augmented data. Or you could give them like, okay, here's a code, just understand it and fix it and give me to do something. So that kind of, because it's a short time, that kind of work could be also good. But I will then open it also to the team, to the other teams. Behagu, go and ask or give comment, anyone. Yeah, yeah I, I would like to ask one question. I saw you remove characters from the transcript. You you were given and yeah. the question is i can understand that 
those characters uh, at least some of the characters has a specific meaning uh, let's say exclamation mark it has a meaning and in Swahili, I think dot works as in English, right? It's like a pause or a stop for a sentence. Oh, um, in that okay. case, uh, let me finish and you'll address that. If it has meaning, let's say if a dot is for stopping or for a pause between uh, words, and if you delete that, doesn't that like create some kind of uh, un un unwanted result? You know, when it's transcribed, it should have. Uh, a period or a dot, but since we removed out of the model, it's gonna be, uh, you know, translated. Uh, the text is, is not gonna have any kind of characters. Uh, so how do you see that? And other important characters as well that you removed. Okay, yeah, thank uh, you, I'm done. Oh, sorry. Sorry for interrupting. Um, in our case, every every audio is a single sentence so technically whether it has a period or not doesn't lend more information and usually in, in a, the inspection of the data uh, actually the marks actually most of the marks are, don't, aren't even included in the text it's just for being safe, but um, a less than and a greater sign were used to show that the data isn't a sentence and that it was um, either unknown audio data, audio recordings, or in other cases, it is music. So, takes care of all of these in one swoop and making sure that the exclamation marks aren't also included and though exclamation marks do offer more information they don't offer more information in our uh, business interest which is getting uh, recording data and the tone of the speech doesn't really need to be matter the over. emotion doesn't matter yeah yeah, yeah. that's why uh, yeah, thank you covers the whole yeah. michael yes and um, and then i well when i went to the group three people when i went to their coach i noticed that for them during the use during the modeling that was when they took out these special characters with with the data that we had there there were some text which has unknown and with that it doesn't have any text at all so there was from for my end what i did was i i created a function which was trying to convert the text into um integers and what happened was at a point it it, it broke down so i realized that there were things in there which was not working then i when I read, when I got to know that part, I saw that there were some which were unknown. So we had to remove that and then the digits as well. So I think that is why it happened that way, because at the end of the day, the way the pre-processing was, if we don't take those things out, we wouldn't be able to convert them. But in their situation with group three, when I went through their code, I realized they rather gave filters to, um, I think, uh, a particular uh, library in Keras which are which did the tokenization i think that's where the differences are great so fantastic i hope that you guys will take this energy and use it to regroup and divide and conquer thank you so much uh, so we have the so here in the morning there will be this the three teams presenting in the afternoon there will be another the three others will present so who wants to give the last for the morning Jacinta, come on. Yeah, uh, I think we can we can do the last sure. for today's morning. Good. Which team is that? Uh, group one. Group one. Okay. Go. On. Yeah. So let me just share my screen. Unfortunately, you will have twelve minutes and three minutes for questions. So 
try to it's okay summarize yeah fantastic yeah so uh we are group one members we started uh a little bit okay but uh down the stretch the dynamic got lost and uh, i think people resulted into their own work so yeah so just the overall so speech to text is a it's a machine learning area and uh the aim is to take for every machine learning you have the x and the y so for x we take in the the audio and for that audio it has to be uh pre-processed into text so that's the output and uh, some examples of uh, this kind of models are uh, alexa or uh, siri and stuff like that but with siri it's more advanced and they have the checking uh the input they process and they give you uh the a response to what you've said really so you know in this project we're using the swahili data sets and uh from it uh, we aim to overcome uh, language barrier found in, in the modern day speech speech to text systems so uh the process of uh that we we, we were supposed to go through was uh you take the WAV file we prepare the metadata and uh, the metadata is like a path because we can't load the actual the actual uh WAV files, which the metadata has like, uh, it shows like a path directory to where the data is. So it will be fetching data from there and uh, it will be pre-processed. So for the pre-processing, you are to load the files, you are to receive them uh, from uh, uh, mono to stereo, and then we resize them, augment, and then we convert into mile spectrum or uh, MFCC so that we fit into our model. And uh, this is just like the simple process all the way to the end. Uh, when it comes to this, this is just words that explain the process. I guess that maybe everyone has read, and uh, they're almost conversant to this. So when it comes to the codes that we develop, we only uh, reached uh, past the pre-processing part basically because uh, after that most people of the group uh, didn't make meetings and uh, didn't show up so it was hard to follow up and do that so most of us resulted into doing personal work but uh, we were collaborating with people like uh, blaze and stacy who would help and solve the problem and uh, for us personally for me how much uh, trying to model my to create my model now that i have my data well prepared so that's why I was asking about the conversion of the MFCC part so that you can feed it properly inside the model. So that's what I'll say has happened in group one. The dynamic wasn't that good and uh, following up wasn't that good. And uh, yeah, that's what I'll say. Okay. Great. Anyone from team one can tell us more in what, even if the dynamics was not good in whatever their effort they managed to do, as well as also what Jack in that didn't cover. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'll say also we started well, but then, yeah, we just disintegrated at some point. But uh, personally, we have again been working in smaller groups from our group and uh, uh, yeah, trying to solve the problem. So for me, uh, I had an issue with the AWS and I couldn't get my GitHub to connect to it. So yeah, Blaze was helping me with that. And uh, now I have it and I'm also training. I think I tried my first model yesterday evening, the simple RNN. So yeah. Can you show That's us That's where I am. a little bit? Can uh, you take us through? Because I mean, the whole point here is irrespective of whatever show the work that you've done you know this consider this you are in a team and in a work whatever it is where you, you spend your time demonstrate it so if you just take us even what it is where you find where you understand where you don't understand where you need to work that's fine okay so this uh, this uh yeah, we started with the pre-processing and then 
not restart, you should just say it's dismiss. Okay. To either or connect. Okay. Yeah. I've gotten help from so many people, but uh, just finally. Uh, you can also connect to to your server, and it will not bother you. Okay. With your SSH. Okay, it's not working. Okay, just dismiss it because I mean you have to SSH um, for this to work. But go on, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. So you managed to do um, you managed to do the pre-processing. Great that you got help. Um, yeah, exactly. If you do that, then it will. Now, if you go back to the to share, dismiss or restart, you just say dismiss, dismiss or. Okay. All right. So I hope we can open this one up. No. no, I think it's somehow what's going on. Okay, just go yeah. on. It doesn't doesn't matter. Something is wrong. I think but you refresh the page. Yeah, maybe just okay. refresh the other one. Right. Or maybe I can use uh, the resource that someone exactly. gave me. But I mean, I think it's just it's okay. Just go to the the one. It's it, go to the part where okay, you can restart, like refresh, reload the page. Okay. For some reason, it's not. Ah. Yeah, it keeps doing that since the weekend. I don't know why. It just goes off. I think it's I understand. It's okay. It's, it's our fault, probably not your fault. So you can go to yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So Deborah had sent me this, and uh, uh, it had some simple models in it. The first one of it was a simple, a very simple. Uh, recurrent neural network and uh, so I just took my processed data and then inserted it in the model yeah no. so I took my yeah. pre-processed data and then I fed it into a model that looks like this. So I have a different dimension because uh, my data set has not been well clean. Okay. With the, with the, with the spectrograms and uh, the labels. And uh, yeah, yesterday it actually read. I don't know, I don't know why it's not loading right now. So yeah, that's where I am. I'm going to try two models. And uh, uh, yeah, I have one that was built more deeply. It still has issues, but I'm going to use the two. And uh, I think the second one will be the best. So that's what I would uh, deploy. OK, so are you working with anyone in your team so that you could decompose the task? So you can go back now to your uh, Jupyter notebook and refresh. It should work. Um, OK. Uh, it's like where yeah. it was fitting. Just now, if you reload, it should probably work. Okay. Okay. Maybe not. Okay. So it's what I would say is that you should be able to. You should be able to. Um, to work with another person at least, such that, you know, one of you work on the pre-processing, another one in the modeling, and kind of work together. But I, of course, I am just saying that, but you should work more, but not with just only one more person, but at least pair up and try to, to make it work. So I think this, there's still time. It's good that you got there, 
but I would say it would be great if you if you guys could just um, work at least with whoever is active um, and make it work. And by the end, achieve what you want to have, which is like a model where everything is quantified. It's uh, you know, um, the end to end is finished at least. That what is only left is to improve. Yeah, okay. we'll do that. I think, yeah, yeah, we'll come back together. Fantastic. Anyone else from the team wants to say? We have one and a half minutes. Uh, so, yeah, uh, probably fully understood the dynamics of how our team is working. But as for me, I did, I did try to also take a route where I differentiate the the accuracy you can get from using MFCC and using a spectrogram. So I probably can just share my screen and yeah. But I'm also having the issues with the server as well. It keeps on showing yeah. refresh and that's connection issues. Interesting. That is that that's group one, right? Yep. I just see that Jupiter is working. Is that uh, okay? Uh, so I just dismiss. I probably will have showed you the most of it. Most of the pre-processing happens in, a, in the script part. But in this case, I can't access my scripts due to the. Yeah, no, I think I will just fix it right sure. now. It's okay. Um, okay, sure. So most of the after the pre processing, we just had uh, just a simple way plots of how the data looks like. And we did calculate the length of the files and also the texts, we, which we'll probably pre process later and try to come up with uh, some meanings about it. So after all the pre processing, we ended up selecting. Um, we did have like the samples and the ML spectrogram, and these are the samples we got using the MFCC. Then, for my case, I trying to use uh, the ML spectrogram and the text to see what whether we'll have like a significant difference in accuracy and error rates when we use we probably input them with the ML spectrogram and when we use the MFCC. So in this case. Uh, due to the fact that my arrays came out very uneven, I had to use uh, a rugged a rugged tensor using the TensorFlow library. But since then, I'm just trying to uh, reshape them so that they can be able to finish to my model, which is uh, a, two, a 2D uh, layer. In this case, it's still trying to process and model it since yesterday the servers were down. But okay, so if you, if, you check, if you check the server now, can you yeah, yeah, see? No. So did you did you SSH? Yes, I did. Let me show. Let me restart. It. Restart. Yeah, it's still not there. Okay. okay. I guess it's still the same problem, which I do think most of my team members had actually experienced the same issue and we'd raised it previously. Okay, so I think it should just be fixed soon. I think it must be like when, because we stop and start it, and when it starts again, there must be some services that needs to be, if you just do restart, what, what does okay. it do? Okay, let me try it again. So now, now like when, when you just press restart. Start, okay, let me try doing so. Nothing. So, but where are you? Like, it seems like this is this should disappear. Yeah, every time it does that, it takes you to a new page. Then, when you so try to refresh, you go to your terminal. I mean, if you go to your, is that in a browser or is that from your? I think it seems from local this one, or is that from? Let me try refreshing it again using my terminal. Is like what I'm saying? Are you in a browser or where are you? Yes, I'm in a browser. Okay, because I don't see the browser part. Um, so maybe kernel restart? It's just kernel. Okay, sure. Let me check that. Just go to kernel and shut down. Shut down all and. Okay. Because in principle, this should work. Okay. It seems like yeah, the the one which is the okay. So let's let's not spend our time there, but okay. 
So, I mean, this should just be not a problem. I think this should be from our side, it should be fixed. Um, okay. So, I would say, I, I think probably we should talk again tomorrow with you, so that with the team, so with this team as well as also with the fourth team, just so that we get, we understand at least the ones who want to work are able to work and continue by regrouping. So, um, yeah, like just make, make sure that you move forward, just whatever, at whatever is the situation. Okay, is there anyone who wants to raise a question, one question to group one? Or what the kind of comment from their own experience in the team? Any comment, advice, suggestion, or question? Okay, if not, I think let's stop here, unless there's any burning one question to anything or any announcement from the Academy team. If not, so at five o'clock, uh, at um, so Abu Bakr, can you announce the time, which is the usual one, but for one hour between five and six? That we will we will have the rest of the teams. So in this case, group two, group five, and group six will present. And I assume everyone will be out. Yes, will be will attend also to give comment and learn more from other teams. So I expect to see every one of you between five and six. We will be more very strict on time, so you will not spend more or less. Great. So I just just to add one thing, guys. I missed unfortunately I had another call, so I missed uh, most of today's presentations, but I did catch a little bit. Um, just a reminder to think through, you want to be able to showcase the work that you've done. So um, as you're moving towards the end of it, be, be aware of the need to be able to show off what you've done. And for everyone on the team, even if you haven't done all of the coding yourself, it's, a, it's very important for you and to get, help us get you into work, that you understand what happened, even if you didn't do all the work yourself, that you work with the people who did do the work and ask them, how does this work? Um, so it's such that you're able to explain it to employers and you can honestly showcase it um, that on your profile, I did this work as part of a team. So even if you don't know, don't be content with just saying, okay, someone else did it and I got a grade. Um, at the end, the job is an individual thing. So please um, take the time now, make sure that it's explainable and make sure that it's uh, presentable and you can do so honestly. Perfect. Cheers, everyone. See you later.